Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter his word. God bless you. And our worship the sacrifice of our lady. May they be acceptable unto you as a sweet smelling sample. Father, even as we do so, may the heavens be open. Visit us again tonight in a way and a manner that we don't even expect. Reach out to every hungry heart, everyone that comes with expectation. As you promise, our expectation shall not be cut off, and our desires shall be granted. To the glory of your name. Holy Spirit, as we appreciate your presence, honor you as we surrender this meeting and ask that you take absolute control. Have your way. Let Jesus Christ and Him alone be exalted as we hide behind the very cross of Jesus Christ. Bring forth your word. The world that is able to build us and offer us our inheritance among them that are sanctified. Let every boundary, every hindrance, every oppression, all of them be destroyed and set your children liberty. Even so, in your presence, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is peace and joy, the Holy Spirit, and even life forevermore. So this is our heart desire today, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. <laughs> Just one more favor. Greet someone to church again. It's not only on Sundays that you greet someone or welcome someone to church. asking a question and I want to get a response <laughs> or responses and I wish I have a viral here viral in my own or if someone can lend me his or hers whether it's blue or black or yellow or green okay, so that um, now I want to ask you a question and everybody listen very carefully What you've heard Jesus, for example, say to Peter when Peter, when the disciples of Jesus Christ were afraid because they saw him walk on the water, so they were afraid. And Jesus said, Do not be afraid, it is I. And Peter said, If you are sure you are the one, tell me to. And then Jesus said, Come. What kind of faith? Is it called faith? What kind of um, boldness? What kind of audacity that made Jesus say to Peter, Come? On the water? How many of us will want to speak that way? That is, your word becomes like God speaking. You get my point. You see the kind of audacity with which Jesus Christ spoke. The kind of things he says. He doesn't, he doesn't have any sense of uh, trying to build up his faith or build his confidence. He knows that he knows that every single word that he says he said, when he said, pick up your bed 
and go. A man that had been crippled for 38 years. He did not do any acrobatic displays and then shake his head. You know, all those things we do. He didn't do any of them. He says, just pick up your bed. And then a young man came to him and said, my servant was sick. He said, okay, I'm coming. And then the man said, no, I don't need you to come. Just say what. And then Jesus just opened his mouth and said, what kind of confidence? What, you know the way he speaks, the way he talks, the kind of confidence. And he said to the wind, be still. That settles it. I don't know whether you call it faith. I don't know whether you call it uh, conviction. I don't know the word to use. That man, he, he the, 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 the disciple said that even the wind obey him. They listen to him and obey him. What kind of faith? Because at any point in time, the, his disciples will fault in one way or the other. He always rebuke them. He said, you little faith. How much time will I be with you? Now, see the question. I know you desire to speak like Jesus, to be like him, to do the kind of things that he does. And he said, the works that I do, you will do even greater works. Is it lying? No. Does it mean what he says? Yes. Now, the question is, what do you think that you need to do? Is there anything that you think you need to do in order to speak like him? In order to do the kind of things that he did? What do I need to know? What do I need to have in order to speak like Jesus? In order to be, because it is a so my question is, what do you consider to be the major things or the kind of things you need to have or to know in order that you may be able, even for those of us who are afraid and will, you know a lot of Christians are afraid of Satan more than they are afraid of God. No matter how you say it, no matter how you do it. You know the problem between you and that miracle that you are looking for, whatever miracle, whatever need it is in your life, the difference, the distance, the, what makes the difference is faith. What is it that you need to know or you need to have so that you have faith by default? You know what is faith by default? That is, you don't think about it. Just like you walk in here and there is a chair behind you and you just put your bomb on the chair. You didn't think twice. You didn't wonder whether the chair will carry you or not. You just know. You just walk in. Unconsciously, you just come and sit down on the chair. That is what is called faith falls. That is, you act as if everything is what do you think you need to know if you're going to walk in that kind of walk? Yes. Do you get the message? Do you get the question? So supply me. I want to get one, two, three, four. What do you know? Pastor, speak. Pastor John, oh yeah, what do you need to know? Anything. <laughs> Can you speak like Jesus Christ? What do you think you need to know or have in order to speak like him? In order to believe? The faith of Abraham, for example. It made Abraham so much that the whole the God now said, Look unto Abraham. 
and Sarah because I go. When you talk about faith, you refer to Abraham. What made Abraham have that kind of faith? How did it come about? Okay, somebody like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? What kind of faith? What made them that thick? Okay, look at somebody like Daniel. And when he was threatened with the lion of death, the guy didn't shake. Is that not faith? You know Hebrew 11, 6 say, without this faith, you can't please God. You cannot please. If you are interested in things that are pleasing in the sight of God, if you are interested in pleasing God, to please God, to make God happy so that God will become your friend. What made Abraham become a friend of God? What is it that Abraham knew? What is it that Daniel knew? What is it that David knew? That they worked so much with God. What is it that Moses knew? That walked that way with God. What is that man that was uh, translated? Enoch. What did Enoch know? So much that he walked with God with that level of faith or trust. There must be something these people know. There must be something these people have. It's not, it's not just a, there must be something. If you can find out those things and go in pursuit of it, let me, let me tell you, you will walk because the Bible said, Jesus said, the things that I do, he said you will do the same and do much more. That is where we are going to, that's, we need to step up because of the coming times and seasons. So, number one, this is nobody knows. That's why I brought my Bible and I opened my paper. I want to write. I want to get it. Somebody talking. Okay. I will tell you what it is. The first one I spoke about it, I talked about it, we discussed it last Saturday. I mean, sorry, last Thursday. Uh, rolling, uh, rolling their eyes and their head and their brain to remember the message of last Thursday. How many of you remember? <laughs> Burial Christians. They heard it. They went home. They opened the scriptures. So as to in Analyze it. Just gathering knowledge and John and putting it on your head. It's not working. What was it last week? Thursday. Except you go back to your notes. So what it means is that since Thursday last week till now. The very first thing that you must know. If you are going to walk the works of God, if you are do exploit in this last days, if you are going to have the kind of faith that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had, if you are going to walk the way Moses walked with God, and the way Daniel and David and all these great men of God, in our time, somebody like Smith Wigglesworth, somebody like Kenneth Hagin, somebody like E.W. It was a default. It was a normal life. It's like the way these people do. There is no struggle about faith. They are not trying to say, Lord, increase my faith. They didn't say, Lord, I'm believing God for this. You know those things we do. I am believing God for it. They don't have such. They don't, they don't find themselves in that realm. The 
first thing that you must know. I talked about it last Thursday. Is that you must know mercies. Give me Psalm 45, 145, 8 and 9. In the Old Testament, the Bible calls it gracious, compassion, mercies, and all of that. In the New Testament, it is called know the love of God. If you don't know it, can't walk, you can't have this kind of faith in your heart. If you don't know it, forget about it. You can fast, you can pray, you can speak in tongues for all I care. If you don't know this, there are, you are so limited in your walk with God. When you talk about faith, because without faith, the only thing that God answers and looks at, and the people that he looks at, the people are, that are his friends, are those who walk by faith. What does it mean to walk by faith? Walking in obedience to God's word. God gives commandment, you just do it. Without thinking twice about it. Whether you understand it or you don't understand it. But the fact that he has said it, said it. There is something that you need to know. For you to walk that kind of walk. The first I said, you must understand God's mercies. If you don't understand it, you are just playing religion. You are just going to church and coming back. Your tongues is just, you are blowing hot air. I don't care how gingy your, your tongues is. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is full of compassion. The Lord is patient. That is slow to anger. And God, the Lord is great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. To how many people? That is, He is gracious to all people. He is full of compassion to all people. He is slow to anger to everyone. He is of great mercy to all. He is good to all. Standard mercies are over all his works. Will God do it? He will. Because if you don't understand the love of God, the message of God, you can't walk with God. You keep, con you keep condemning yourself, looking down on yourself, thinking that there are special people that God is so favored that you are not favored, that you are not part of it. So that is why the Bible says in the Old Testament, they limited the Holy One of Israel. You would think that God has special. There are certain people that God hears their prayers. And so you put your, your leg on the brake. And the car won't move. God loves you. He's amazing. When we say God loves you, you don't understand. Give me Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, 18, and 19. He said that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in what? In love. May be able to comprehend with all the sense what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which does what? You can't even understand it. The love of Jesus Christ is amazing. You want to know the love of Jesus Christ? There is not one single person, I told you last week, there is no single person that ever came to him for one need or the other 
in his earthly ministry that he turned back in. True or false? Everyone, everybody, as long as you come to him in truth, in sincerity of heart, you will definitely. He won't tell you to come tomorrow. If you don't have that kind of understanding, you cannot deal with God. You can't follow Him. You cannot walk with Him. Because what He's expecting, you must know that God is good. And He's good to you. Then somebody might say, How may I know that God loves me? Say me. How may I know that God loves Fred? Lord, do you love me? He asked Peter that question. He said, Peter, do you love me? You can as well ask him, do you love me? Ask Jesus, Lord, do you really love me? It's not a crime. You have not committed any sin. It's not a, you are not walking in unbelief. Because he asked Peter the same question. Lord, do you love me? And Jesus say yes. And then you will go further to ask him, how may I know <laughs> that you love me? Prove it. What is a proof? Because I need a proof. Convince me beyond all reasonable that, that you love me. Because if I know you love me, anything that you tell me to do, I will do it. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So Lord, do you love me? I want to be sure. I want a conviction. I want a proof. Full proof. So how many of you, who knows what is a proof? The proof of the love of God towards you as a person, not as us. Who knows? Because these are specific questions. If you want to walk with God, if you want to go deeper with God, there are specific, you've got to sit down one-on-one -on -one, asking questions. He will speak to you in the closet. You have a quiet time with him. A quiet time is, you know, it's not, it's, you see, eh? When you wake up in the night, wake up early in the morning, or in the afternoon, whenever it's time, shut your eyes and think, Lord, I've heard you say before that you so love the world. Do you really? Okay, let's not talk about the word and let's be personal Lord do you love me ask Peter and of course you know his answer yes I love you and then your further question the next question will be I know because God said to Abraham own son from your own loin be your son your own another person. And when God finishes all the grammar that he was speaking to Abraham, Abraham now asks a question. <laughs> How may I know? Ask him that question in your closet on one-on-one. -on -one. God, do you love me? Yes. How may I know? And he said, Give me John 15, 13. If you don't settle this thing, one-on-one, one-on-one, on one, on one, you know what they mean by one-on-one? -on -one? You and God alone, you and Jesus alone, or you and the Holy Spirit alone, you must get conviction. That's why Paul said, I am convinced. I am 
convinced beyond all reasonable doubt that no amount of suffering in this life can be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. He, he is someone who sits down and asks personal questions and got that conviction and God imparts that to the spirit man. Say, greater love has no one than this. Than to lay down one's life for his friends. Speak all the grammar. Speak all the tongues you know how to speak. And even give yourself to be born. Sacrifice every single thing that you have. And every man you can have up everything for you, for the sake of your life. True or false? You can afford to give everything that you have labored in this life. To give them up all, all, not one single remaining life. Because you want to preserve your life. True or false? If I am wrong, I stand to be corrected, please. I don't know how wealthy you are. I don't know what is so special to you. What you have labor. It's just like now my wife. You know, when you go to Shakaka Garden, now how she can live. Deadly disease is between your life. One will you choose to give your life up and to preserve those ones, or to give those things up in order to preserve your life? Which one do you go? Is it not life? That is why he said, No man that a man should do what? down his life. So what is wrong with you? There is no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life. That's the height. That's the height of it. Now the question is, since I have now confirmed that the greatest love and the greatest gift and the greatest sacrifice anybody can make, people can sacrifice whatever they, it is. You can give for every single thing. If you read 1 Corinthians 13, he's talking about love. He said, even if I give every single thing that I have, born myself to death and all of that, you know, and, all, and yet you have not come to the point of surrendering your life. Your life, you have not started. That's the height of it. Now, the question is we now know that the life is the highest sacrifice ever. So, when you hear people that say, I have made sacrifice, I have borne my time, I have done this, and that, you've not done anything, no. Until you have laid down this your life. You are ready to lay it down. But that's the height of it. And now see another dimension to it. You can afford to lay down your life a mother. There was something that happened recently. I don't want to go further. It has to do with my family. You remember. <laughs> I was boiling. I was boiling inside. I feel like pulling down and destroying the whole structure. I was ready to, if, if God did not do something and restrain me, what I would have done by now 
because somebody from my loin was touched. One of my kids was touched. I was ready to do the unthinkable. Now see. Can you lay down your life? Jesus said this is the greatest of it. Not only that I lay down my life, you can afford to lay down your life for your son, for your daughter, for your child, for your husband for your wife to an extent you can afford to do that but can you afford to lay down your life for your enemy the one that killed your son the one that killed your daughter the one that killed your husband the one that killed your wife in cold blood and then that person's life is in danger of death and then you now come out and say I will lay down my life for him to be saved who will do that? Is to show you the extent of what he did. Because when you don't have the understanding, there are extent to which you cannot work with God. All these things that we are talking about and doing are just lip service. That's why there are dimensions of working with God. That's why there is little faith. Jesus called it little faith. There is another one that is called weak faith. There is another one that is called strong faith. There is one that Jesus called great faith. Men who have great faith are men who understood the mercies of God, who know the love of God. So that you can with every confidence and boldness and assurance and say like Paul would say, nothing shall separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Because if he had gone to this extent of laying down his life for me, not as a friend, but as an enemy. Give me Romans chapter 5 verse 6. He laid it down as an enemy. As an armed robber. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the, God, for the godly, but for the ungodly. Those of them who do not deserve it at all. If he died, if he went to this extent, what is it that he cannot do for you? Verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Very scarce. For you to be able to die for your friend. For somebody who didn't do something wrong. And he's being punished. And you see, who is ready to come and die? There are few people that will be able to do that. He said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. You won't come for, you say now, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And when it is time for you to come and lay down your life, when your life is demanded, you will now know the extent of that love that you are claiming that you have. But this is what Jesus Christ did. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, one would even dare to die. Verse 8. But God demonstrates this is the demonstration of the love of God for you. For God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still righteous and friends of God, while we were still what? Enemies of God. We were God's enemies. Yet, he died for us. Who can do that? Jesus died. You don't believe that Jesus died? No, he died. He died. He was crucified. Not because of his sin. But because of your sin and my sin. He who knew no sin. He was made sin. 
these are the things when I sit down, I open the Bible, I just read one verse and one scripture and all of that, I close it. I go to think. If you don't know the love of God, hmm? when they tell you that God loves you, it will be flying over your head. If they tell you that God is good all the time, you look at your, and remember, it is the extent of your faith, your faith, your trust, your belief, you are accepting that truth. If you don't accept it, it will not work. There are laws. God operates by laws. If you read Romans chapter 1, don't go there. He said that the, 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 the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. There are laws. And God will never break his laws. If you read first, um, uh, um, Psalm 138 verse 2, you will know that God has exalted his word all above every of his name. God is submitted to his word. His words are laws. They are spiritual laws. He can't break it for no reason. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have done what? Magnified your word. Exalted it above all your name. He submits. Cry from now till tomorrow. Weeping sentiments. Being emotional. When you finish, you will still remain without your problem. You can come to church here where there is, when there is nobody here and you lay on the altar be crying and weeping and telling God how you've been suffering over the years. When you finish, your problem will even increase because frustration will continue to increase because he doesn't have faith. The only thing that attracts God and moves God in your direction is your faith life. That is why he said, with their faith. He didn't say it is difficult with their faith. It is impossible to please God. And anyone that comes to God must believe that he is. That he is what? That he is good to all. That he loves. That God is love. The definition of God is that God is love. First John chapter 4, it tells us and verse 16. It tells us that God is love. In other words, God is merciful and his mercies endure it forever. If you read the Old Testament in Chronicles and all of that, you hear them say, and I, your mercies endure forever. And then the glory of God fills it. When you don't know, it's not just about confession. You confess by revelation because you know it and then from, it, from your heart, the thing is coming from, not from your head. Because the thing has gone into your, you have, you have, it has become a revelation inside of you. And then out of the abundance of that revelation, out of the abundance of your heart, it comes. That's when it makes a difference. You must know the love of God. Give me Romans 8.32. Thirty-one. Thirty-one and thirty-two. What then shall we say to these things that we've been talking about since we started this service? What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? How do I know that God is for me? Verse thirty-two tells me, He who did not spare his own son. Think about it. He did not spare his own. He didn't have to. <laughs> his only one. The only son. You know, we have parents today that have only son. Only. If you see, <laughs> that child is no go area. That man is ready to fight the president with his life. If you kill me, kill me. In Igbo land, they tell you, in Igbo language, they say, Ufwanya ji subo. That is one eye that owes blindness. Because if that son goes, you 
you don't have replacement. There is no replacement. You will be childless. So you will guard and protect that child. You will love that child. You will want to provide everything for that child. You will not want anything to happen to him. That's what God did with Abraham. To show you, you can see why God said, I know Abraham. When he did it, God said to Abraham, Now I know. <laughs> now I know. Because he told him, He said, Bring out your only son, Isaac. Thy son, Isaac. Thy only son. Bring him and slaughter him. Abraham didn't think twice. He didn't argue with God. He didn't go home and then began to have a sleepless night, turning up and down. And he didn't do that. Brought him freely. That is loving God by default. <laughs> by default. when he did that, God now said to Abraham, now I know. You can go back to verse, I think he's, uh, go back up. I thought you, you go up a little bit. I think it's verse, uh, is it not verse 1? He said, bring down your, your only, your son Isaac, thy only son. Verse 1. Okay. He said, then he said, take your son, your only son. I, he mentioned the name. The one you love. <laughs> Bring him. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a bond. That is, go to Moriah and kill him. That is what he was demonstrating the love of God for us. He gave his only son. Abraham was a type of God. That son, Isaac, was a type of Christ. He's a type and shadow. In the New Testament, that Abraham is like God and Isaac is like Jesus Christ. And Jesus, God gave up the only son that he had. And he didn't give him up because he were his friend. No, he gave him up even while you were his enemy. That's what we read in Romans chapter 5. It's to show you the extent of love that God has for you. And then he went to Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Then go back to that verse 32. He says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For how many? For how many? For all. Does all include unbelievers? Does it include the, the wicked ones? Does it include the unjust? Does it include the ungodly? He deliver, he spare, he did not spare his only son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also through fasting and prayer through fasting and prayer give us all things he said freely freely listen to me and listen good. take the word of God literally the way don't add to it don't remove anything don't catch any other revelation from don't begin to see to see that that uh, the Greek word for free. No, leave it this way. That's how I receive it. He will with him freely give you all. Said, the Bible said that God has not given us a spirit but he has given us the Holy Spirit so that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God because he loves you if God 
God, listen, if God could not spare his son, but gave him up for you, is there any other thing that is greater than his son that he will not, if he could give you his, his son, is there any other thing that he cannot give you? Please tell me, talk to me. Is there any other thing? What about a house? What about a car? What about healing? What about deliverance? What about breakthrough? Is there any other thing greater than is breakthrough greater than the son, the life of Jesus Christ? Is your healing greater than the life of Jesus? Is your deliverance greater than him? Is getting accommodation for you, is he greater? What is it that is greater than the love of God? Nothing. The problem is that we don't know it. And because we don't know it, we don't believe it. And because we don't believe it, we don't say it. And because we don't say it, we don't have it. We don't experience it. Because faith speaks. It's our problem. It's knowledge. If I am fasting, if you hear that I'm fasting, if you hear that I am fasting and praying, I'm not fasting and praying for any promotion or any breakthrough. It has been, I can't remember the last time I did it. Many years ago. If I am fasting, if I am praying, my fasting and prayer is always that I may know you. Grant me the spirit of wisdom. Give me revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my understanding light in, so that I may know the hope of your glory. So that I may know the riches of your glorious inheritance so that I may know those things that are freely given to me, so that I will know the investment that you put inside of me so that I will know the meaning of the truth that you say that the Holy Spirit, that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is living inside of me I need a revelation, I don't understand it it's still shaking my head I don't have the slightest understanding of what it means, we can be saying it the day you know that the Holy Spirit is inside of you, the day you will know it I know you've been talking about it but we don't know it. The day you will know it. That's when a viper will climb your body, your heart, whatever you will say. It's by default. That's when a viper will climb your body. You don't shake it. Shake it up and continue with it. As if to say you don't even know. Maybe it's a one hand or whatever. You don't shake it up and continue what you are doing. The day you know the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Make it different. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't know what it is. Just in the Old Testament, they carry the ark. Any way the ark, any way the ark of the covenant enters, is case closed. <laughs> any way they carry the ark, that ark is where God is living, is it not? So they bring God into the, anywhere. One day they went and conquered the children of Israel, collected the Ark of the Covenant and brought them and kept the Ark of the Covenant inside their, their temple. By the time they slept and woke up in the morning, all those uh, all those uh, statues or whatever, they, every one of them fell down and broke, broke into pieces. He said, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and you are still, <laughs> you know, you don't know you don't know. And the earlier you accept that you are ignorant of it, you don't know, the better for you because that is where you will go begin to ask and pray to God. There are things you pray for. There are things you pray about. Lord, give me a husband. Lord, give me a wife. I don't pray. When I was, when I wanted to marry in those, I didn't pray, God, give me a wife, give me a husband, give me this. I didn't. But I said to God, and God bears me witness, I'm standing here and I lie not. Many years ago, you know what I said to God? Lord, you say that you love me. <laughs> Prove it. Give me a wife. That I will love and she will love me and I will walk together. Because I want to be, I want my marriage to represent a marriage between Jesus Christ and his church. That is what I want. This is what I say to him. And he has proven that he loves me. See, one of the evidences.
sisi. It's because of this thing that we don't know. That is why we are like this. We are like that. Confidence is not there. When you speak word, you are, our words are weak. It doesn't carry life. That's why, that's why Bishop Oyedebo calls it living faith. There are faith that is alive, that is living. There are some that are dead. Say faith without works is dead. Faith is that action that a man takes based on the conviction of God's integrity. The action that you carry out on the basis of your conviction about God and his word. That's what we give. The, that's what the Bible calls faith. Your action based on your trust and your confidence in God. That's what makes you to do what you did. I dwell on this, we will not be here this night. Honestly speaking, believe me. But I want to talk about the second thing that you need to know. <laughs> having known the love of God, having known that God is merciful, having known that God is gracious, having known that God is good to all, He does not consult your past in order to determine your tomorrow. He doesn't do that. If he forgives you, he has forgotten it. Is you is your brain that is remembering it? You know the Bible says he is slow to anger. In other words, his patience. In other words, his long suffering towards you. That's why a lot of people misunderstand God. Because you see somebody who is mis misbehaving big time, and God is giving him time, patience, he's waiting on him. He said, don't you know, remember, knowest thou not, O man, that the patience of God, his kindness is to draw you to repentance. That he is patient. He is patient. He has a very large. And you must take advantage of it. He's not quick to write you off. If God gives up on you, eh? if he gives up on you, finished. But before God will give up on you, I don't, and I don't think he ever gives up, he cannot give up on you. And that is what Jesus said. If you deny me, he will not deny himself. He doesn't give up on people. Man, I might because of what people do or what somebody did. There is something somebody did and all of that. My wife, you know, I saw him when I went to the site and all of that. I was just angry. I said I wasn't going to talk. I just closed his case. I said, keep his closed. That's a man for you. God is not like that. As one of the fruit of the spirit, patience, kindness. Another word for kindness is loving kind. Another word for it is love. Another word for it is mercy. Another one for it is compassion. This is who God is. If you understand this, there is nothing you cannot do. So when He tells you, when when you understand it, and there is a river, you see that Red Sea. When they understood it. Moses knew it. Moses understood it. When God is saying, enter the Red Sea, enter. <laughs> he plunged himself inside. Knowing that he will never deceive you. You need to know the love of God. Is is a, a world of his own. You begin to dig into it and begin to recite, and begin to pray. That's why Paul, you know that scripture, Ephesians 3, 17 and all of, from verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees unto the Father in whom all the families in heaven and on earth is named, and all of that, that will be strengthened with might in our inner man strength according to his glorious reign. All those, they are prayers, so they are prayers, they are prayers. This is the kind of prayer that the man he was praying. 
and he was taken to the third heaven and he saw things that men were not permitted to speak about. There are depths. That's why there are depths of his law. There are height, there are breadth, and there are length. He sing it in the song. Love of Jesus is wonderful. Love of Jesus is wonderful. Love of Jesus is wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high. So deep. So can't understand. The Bible says it is love that passes knowledge. Hey! And he said, eyes have not seen. <laughs> Ears have not heard. Neither has it been conceived in the heart of man. What this love has prepared for you. He lavished it. He didn't spare anything. Wait on when you get to heaven. Some, some of you will go into coma. And when you get to heaven, you go into coma first. Maybe for, for 1,000 years or so before you will recover. When you see the beauty, when you see the glory, some of you will say, Miss Bay, that is, you will pass out. Because you are not used to it. You've never seen anything. The house that Jesus Christ he said that I go to prepare for you. You think it is like Asso Rock? And one day I heard that uh, they saw a rat inside. I'm not like it is true. They say they, they were fumigating Asso Rock because of rats. It's not like the capital in the U.S. where people go to riot and do all those things and carry placard. They don't. It doesn't happen there. You will get to heaven. When you get there, when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, there is no amount of revelation and message and preaching and all of that that can describe how heaven is. It's beyond description. Words of man cannot describe that place. John, in his limited word, he saw, I saw. A new heaven, a new earth. In that earth, there is there was no sun. The glory of Jesus Christ and of the Father illuminated. The streets are tarred with gold. There is no river. There is no. Oh, all these things that is what I'm. That is what the Bible calls a hope, make it not a shame. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. God will never lie to you. Now, the second thing that you must know, if you are going to walk that walk, the first thing is that you must know the love of God. That is the message of God and all of that. The second thing that you must know is that you must know the integrity of God. That God is a God of integrity. That God is swearing to his own heart and does not change. Give me Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man. Say with me, God is not a man. You know, because you see, unconsciously you have reduced God to a mere man without knowing it, because that is what we do. Because you tell somebody you will come and you fail not to come, you will think that that is how God is. You know, you make promises to people that you are going to come, like David will tell me, he said, I'm always calling his name, so he will start coming to church now. David will tell you that I'm coming this evening, you will see him. 
And then when you see him later, he will tell you that something came up. That is man for you. He's not a, I'm just using it as an example. Okay? But he's changing now. He's, uh, yeah, I saw him today. I saw him yesterday. I saw him the day before yesterday. I said, David, this one that you are always in the church now, is like something new is about to happen. He said, yes, that I've been calling his name in the church. So he decided to change. So today he is in the church in midweek service. You have changed indeed. You don't want to clap for him? Amen. God has integrity. What is integrity? He says it. And he stands by it. He's not a man. He cannot lie. God is not a man. He should not lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. That is the word repent. Change his mind. He doesn't do that. If you offend him, what he say he will do, he will say do it. He doesn't withdraw his word. You must know this God that you are following. You must know him. If you don't know that he has integrity, if you don't know, you, he is not a man. His words are yes and amen. In Titus chapter 1 verse 2, he said that God, because, give me Titus chapter 1 verse 2 please. In hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised before the time began. God, because when you, th you think God is like devil, there is no truth. Jesus said he's a liar and he's a father of all lies. When he tells you something, is you can't trust, you can't hold on to what he's telling you. God is not like that. Of Psalm 89. 34. My covenant. My covenant. It is not your covenant. He said, my covenant I will not break. Nor will I alter. That is change. The word that has gone out of my lips. I won't. I won't go back on my word. If I say I will save you, I will save you. If he say I will deliver you, I will deliver you. If he say I will bless you, I will bless you. And when I say it, I will not eat back my I won't take it back. Verse 35. Once have I sworn It is that same David that say I was young. <laughs> now I am old. See David is smiling. Because his name now. David say I was young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed beg for bread. You must know the integrity of God. If God gives you his word, you can, you can bet your If he said that I go to my father's house to prepare a house for you, believe it. He's not lying. He said, if it is not true, I will have to. <laughs> give, me, give me John 14. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it is not true, in my father's house are many what? If it were not so, 
I would have told you. I will not lie to you. Hey. These are some of the things when I sit down, I just, when I finish, eh, I will begin to repent. I will say, God, I'm sorry for ever in my heart, doubting you in my heart, not to talk about in my action. I say, I'm so sorry. Let me tell you something. I was sharing with uh, Pastor Buku yesterday. I said, it is this kind of truth that when you know it, when you invest, when you, when you, when you sit on it and the thing enters you, it will delete every negative thought and mindset from you. It will delete it. You will no longer have any sense of need at all. You know the sense, uh, you say, I, I, I have need, I, I don't have money for accommodation, I don't have money to repair my car, I don't have money to pay school fees, I don't, all those mind, all those thoughts and what, it will vanish from your mind, you will remember it. What I'm telling you, I have been there. You will not remember that you have need at all. This kind of revelation and knowledge of God, this is, I'm going to tell you about what the word of God does say. <laughs> It is at that point when you no longer have need, sense of need for a husband, for example. When you no longer have sense of need for a wife, for example. When you don't have any sense of need for money to pay for your accommodation. When you don't have, when you, when the thing is already, you have, you have forgotten about it. The word of God and all of that has taken it, cleared it from your mind. It is at that point that the miracle comes. It is at that point that breakthrough shows up. When you don't expect it, when you are not looking for it. I had my first child. We had our first daughter. It was a girl. Everybody rejoiced. The second one came. All you see her here. Everybody rejoiced. It was like, uh, okay. The third one came. See her there. It was a girl. God bears me witness and I lie not. I didn't have one single night where I'm turning around the bed and say, why me, oh God? Why me? I'm looking for a male child. Why me, oh God? And then I started fasting and praying. I didn't do that. God bears me witness. I never had any sense of need for a male child. It wasn't in my plan. It wasn't in my program. Ask her the same thing with her. I'm looking for a male child. So, because I'm looking for a male child, that is why you have seven children. how to raise money. Raise money to pay your school fees, to raise money to... You, when you finish next term, another problem, another, it will come twice. To double how they press down, shaking together, running over. Will they need to come back the second time? Because they say, you have not spent time invest. That's why that's why somebody will say, you are fasting and praying for breakthrough. I saw people are saying 21 days of fasting and praying for breakthrough. Okay. Anyway, okay. It is just the level at which they know. When the sense of need and want clears from your mind, you are ready. The miracle, is the way it will hit you, like thunderbolt. But it is this kind of knowledge that you need. You put it inside of you. For when God made a promise to Abraham,
because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself just to help Abraham to believe him, to trust him so they can walk together. Verse 14. Saying, surely blessing, I will do what? Bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. Verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, what happened? What God promised came to pass. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should do what? Say with me, God does not lie. Say with me, God is not like man. Say with me, God is not like my cousin, my uncle. Say with me, God is not a politician. Say that God is not a president. <laughs> Say God is God. It's God with an impeccable integrity. He doesn't crack jokes. Though. God doesn't crack jokes. I hope you know. He does not crack jokes. Because jokes are... Uh, not the truth. God, God, God doesn't crack jokes with you. He doesn't play a game. That's why he say his words are what? Yes and amen. He doesn't crack jokes. He means what he says and he says what he means. He has sworn his vow. He said by my holiness have I sworn. that I will not lie to David. Every single thing that he promised David, he had brought them to come to pass till death. Look at what he... Oh, yeah, we should... You know, you know what you do? You should go back and repent oh, for even doubting God. Because it is a sin. I will show you something. Verse, he said, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained a promise. Verse 16. For men in this whereby the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of what? Dispute. When you have quarrel or misunderstanding or whatever with someone, in order to settle that problem once and forever, you will swear. And the person swears to you. So if you go about and break that oath you have taken, the higher power will come after you. There is nobody that can deliver you. No amount of DPR or call cord you join will save you from it. If God is against you, no one can deliver you from his hands. For men in this whereby greater an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel the unchangeability of his counsel, the indissolubility of his counsel, confirm it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is what? Go to your Bible, underline that word impossible for God to also remember it. He didn't say it is difficult. He said it is, it, what is impossible? Impossible means something that cannot happen. If he says by my stripes you have been healed, he means it. If you are not healed, the problem is with you. You think that God doesn't want to heal you? All good gift and perfect gift they come from above. That's what the Bible says. So what you have with you as an ailment, as, a, as an infirmity is not from God. It's from Satan. What you need is to have faith in God. And he will move. That mountain will come. God has integrity. It's not like man. It's not like politicians. It's not like all this in the world. This don't have any single. 
be conscious about. So a lot of people, you are interested, you watch CNN, you watch channels, you watch AIT, you watch, you listen to news and hear all those garbages and all those calamities and all of that, they are feeding you. And when they finish, you become more confused and afraid of your shadow. Look at coronavirus. And you see the kind of, you see the kind of life people, you see them, I see them every day, even till today. Someone came to my office today. He was covering the mouth. But he covered the mouth and left the nose. And you see them on the road there, they covered the mouth and left the nose. Is that what you are told to do? You are told to cover the whole of your and barely leave your eyes. If possible, you cover it so that the thing doesn't enter through your eyes. But he said, if you serve me, if you serve me, <laughs> if you serve me, I will bless your water. I will bless your bread. All these diseases, they won't come near you. Is a lie. Is a lie. So serve him. If you believe it, then serve him. If you say you believe it and you are not serving him, you are a liar. The truth is not in you. I'm a living example. Asked my wife, there was a time they had a meeting somewhere and all of that. Issues came. People came down with problems and all of that. No, she had come in contact with a couple of people with COVID-19 and COVID-20 and even COVID-21. With second wave and third wave. And they come, she had come in contact with first wave and coming. There is third wave, I hope you know. It's coming. We're not through with uh, second wave. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. If after shaking you, you say, ah, Pastor, I made a mistake. Oh, I forgot that I have COVID. And then I'll start doing like this. Looking for where somebody to, where to get water. I put my hand under the rushing water. And uh, you think I'm going to do it. I won't do it. Because by that time I have contact with your hand, every, there is a life inside this. There is a life. There is a life. The spirit of law and life. The spirit of life which is in Christ has set me free from this law of sin and death. I'm immutable. The life of God is flowing through me. As our outward man perished, our inner man is renewed. Invest in eternal life. That's what you do when you go to the community. That is why you can go to this community and eat that bread and drink that wine. It becomes like ordinary bread and wine to you, and nothing happens. Another person with faith and understanding and revelation will eat it and drink it. He will put it inside the mouth of a dying man and that person will take back to life. It's faith. That man that was crippled at the gate when Peter and John were going for prayer meeting, not they were coming from prayer meeting, they were going. Say, look on us. Silver gold we do not have. But such as I have given I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the man got up. And then the people gathered and thought that they, they, Peter said, you are looking at us as if to say we fell from heaven. He said, there is only one reason why this man is here. He said, faith. Faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Faith. In the blood of Jesus and in the body of Jesus Christ. He says, anyone eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have life. He said, my body, for my, my, my body is the flesh and the blood. The wine is my blood. Blood. So as you eat and drink it, you have life. 
you reactivate, you rekindle. That life. There is a fresh supply. It's with knowledge, it's with revelation. If you don't eat it that way, it will be nothing to you. You must know God if you want to walk the walk of faith like Abraham did, like Moses, like Daniel, like Jeremiah, Elijah. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all these great men, Jephthah, Samuel, men who through faith subdued. There were things they knew. They knew the mercies of God. In the older, in the New Testament, it is called the love of God. They didn't even have as much love of God that they had in their own. In this New Testament, we now had Jesus Christ who was given as a sacrifice. In the Old Testament, it was just covenant, Old Testament covenant that he caught with the, the children of Israel and Abraham with animals and heifers and all of that. The Bible says, if the blood of animal can wash sins and all of that and keep them away from them and then bring the blessings of God, and all. How much more with the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit of God was shed to purge our conscience, our heart from evil conscience, so that we might serve God. How much more the blood of Jesus Christ? You must know the love of God as the message of God. You must know the, that God has integrity. So that any time you open the Bible and you read it, it's as good as taking a check and go to bank and present it on the counter. It's as good as that check. Any word of God, except it is not God's word, it is as good as a check. You go to the counter and present. You will cash it. If you go with that kind of confidence and third thing that you must know about God if you are going to walk with God you must know the integrity of God's word this word what the word of God can do when you say it the problem is the, see, let me tell you where the problem is in this case you know there are different kinds of words there is a word of man there is a word of Satan the word of the devil and there is the word of God they are not the same. The word of God has life in it. Give me Psalm 12 verse 6. The words of the Lord are what? They are pure. They are not contaminated. They are pure. They are clean. He said, like silver tried in the furnace. The word of God has been tried. Your own word has not been tried. None else has been tried except the word of God. Tried how many times? Seven times through the fire, furnace of fire. He came out purer. You can count on when the word of God fault. Must know what is going for. It's not the word of man. Inside that word that has gone for, there are in, there are elements inside that thing. There, it's not ordinary word. It's no, 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 no. It's not ordinary word. We can say it. You think it's ordinary. It is not. That is why you need to sit down and, le and read and learn. Study. This is what makes, you see, when you when you when you soak in these words, you soak in these messages and all of that, after a time, you will be transfigured. Something happens to you. You may not just like the Bible said in the book of Mark 4. He said, he said it's like um, 
is like someone that goes to the farm and then plants his corn and then after some days and weeks and all of that the corn now finally grows and then he brings out the leaves and then you see the corn it begins to grow and all of that and all of a sudden the thing has ripe and then you put in the sickle you begin you don't know the processes and all of that what happened you don't sleep and wake up and one day and all of that you don't see that transformation it's going on inside of you you don't know it how many of you have seen yourself growing since you were born have you ever seen growth have you ever witnessed growth you can't see it with your eyes but you are growing Even as you are sitting down now, is it that you are growing taller or you are growing fatter? But you will not see. You see the effect of it after a time. That's what happens when you stand on the word of God. You keep investing it. You keep studying it. You keep hearing it. You keep praying it. You keep doing it. Stay there. Something is happening because there are spiritual things you don't see them with your natural eyes. The word of God has been tried seven times the word of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times it can stand the test of time it's forever it's incorruptible it cannot be corrupted and when we say to you go, for, go to Berea Academy and so because this thing all, most of this thing are in the Berea Academy that's where you study it. He said the word of God is what? Weak. According to Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. He said for the word of God is weak. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder or divide, uh, divide, divide, dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the, the joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In John chapter 6 verse 63 he said, Jesus said for the word that I speak to you they are spirit and they are life. The word is life. There is life inside of it. If that word comes in contact with this iron it comes come alive. If the word of God have effect on this iron, this iron will become a living iron. That is why you see about the Aaron's rod that budded. A rod budded and bear fruit. Rod. Go read it. It's in the Bible. He bore fruit and they plucked it and ate it. Iron. The word of God is life. Anything that is dead, once it comes in contact with that word, it comes alive. The problem is that it has not been, the word of God has not been spoken. If you speak it, you will see life. He said, He's powerful. Hey, hey. What is it that carried when Jesus said to Peter? <laughs> you know, water. How many of you have seen water? In the river. When you see water in the river, put your hand, put your leg there. He said, Jesus said, Come. And so I'm coming. Put your leg inside the river. You see whether you will not go down. But Jesus said to Peter, Come. And Peter stepped out. What carried Peter? Power. There is a power in that world. That's why he stepped. That thing helped. Jeremiah 23, 29, please. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like what? <laughs> Says who? And like what? That does what? It shatters the rock in pieces. Who are you? Who be, who be you? Who born you? Who are you? The word. It will scatter you. Jesus said, I am the rock. <laughs> the word, the rock. He said, if you fall, he said, if you kick the rock, 
What happens? You will fall. If you fall on the rock, you know what will happen? It will break you into pieces. But if the rock finally find, falls on you, they won't see you again. That's what the word of God is like. Find out the word. The thing is that we are not speaking God's word. We are speaking Paul said the, the word the letter kills the spirit gives life. It is the spirit in the word that makes the difference. And that spirit in the word is when it is the word of God if it is the word of man Find out what the word of God is. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by the word, and without nothing was anything made that was made. Speak God's word. Speak God's word. Speak God's word. Study it. Quote it. Declare it. This one, you know what? What do you people? You know what do you say? Holy Ghost fire. When they say, say Holy Ghost fire. Is Holy Ghost fire the word of God? Is it God's word? Say Holy Ghost fire. Back to sender. When you say evil things and all of that against me, I'll, the first thing that I will do, I will just laugh. <laughs> when I finish laughing, I'll tell you. No weapon. Passion against me shall stand. And any tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. I render them useless, inconsequential, void, and of no effect. You will come after me in one way. But get ready because you will flee seven days. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. For God will deliver me from each and every one of them. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I am not afraid because he is with me. If God be for me, there is no one. Is the word of God. Say it. If we don't say it, we don't. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. My God has killed me. My God has killed me. That's what they say. It doesn't mean it. My God has killed me. My God has killed me. shall say unto the righteous it is well with your soul. I therefore say it is well with your soul. In Jesus name. Amen. You just take it. Don't catch revelation you know. There is no Hebrew word for that or Greek word. Just leave it the way it is. Call the name of Jesus. If you are Hebrew, call him Jesus. Leave it like that. If you are an Englishman, call him Jesus Christ. If you are Yoruba, call him who? Jesus Christ. Oluwawa. Amen. 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 Oluwa Jesu. Is he Oluko Jesu? Simple. The Bible says because of the simplicity that is in Christ. We carry Hebrew, put inside on, carry Greek, confuse it. In. Are you a Greek man? Are you a Hebrew? Leave Hebrew for themselves. There is no language that is perfect. Not one. Language is, these languages we are speaking as a result of confusion that came from the Tower of Babel. Yeshua, Yeshua, and uh, what 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 other names? I 
am Amashia, Yahshua, Aya, whatever. All those Yahweh, Aya, leave them for them. They are that's their language. That's what they speak. If you call, okay, so why don't you speak Hebrew or true? When you finish preaching, he say in the name of uh, Yahshua. I don't understand what you are saying. I'm an Igbo man. God speaks to me. Do you know the language that God speaks? How many of you know what, what language? Go read the Bible. I don't have the time to show you. In the book of Revelation, the Bible says there is a name written on him that no man knows. There is a language, there is a word that you read. No man understands it. No man knows. You can't read it. That's the language of heaven. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he speaks to you, he brings that language. He sends it across to you in your own dialect. If he's speaking to a Jewish man, he will speak it in Hebrew to him. If he's speaking to a Latin man, a Latino, he will speak it in Latin to him. If he's speaking to an Igbo man, he will translate it to an Igbo language that you can understand. Because if not, it means that if you don't study Hebrews, it means God will hear your prayer. And then, um, and then your, your whatever will not be strong simplicity. The Bible tells me short and simple. The just shall live by faith. What is the faith? The just, in other words, the just shall live by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The Bible. That's what we are trying to relegate to the background. And that's why we are reaping the wild wind and the misery that we are seeing in the body of Christ today. I'm a believer in the word of God, the Bible. I believe in it. No amount of Satan. I don't care. You see, I will fry that Satan. I will fry him and I will eat him. Spirit, I will eat spirit. Yeah, you come and go to come and terrify me. I'm a terror to terror. I'm a fear to fear. I am more than conquerors. I am born. I'm a seed of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus said, "You don't eat my flesh and drink my blood." You are Antichrist is showing up. His people like you know that's why he said, They that know they are God. He's talking about last days. Is this kind of message that makes you tick? Buy from me gold tried in fire. Because the word of God has been tried seven times. You can bet your life on it. If you're sick. Take a pill of his by his stripes. I am healed. He shall lay hands on the sick. He shall recover. Most, like I said, most of my fastings and prayers is for God to open the veil so I can see beyond the veil. The word. You know this world is sealed, is covered. There is a seal. If you just open up, open it like that and be reading it, it will just be dry. So I ask him to open my, anoint my eyes, thy salve, so that I can behold the wondrous things in thy world. There are wonder, there are mysteries inside. That thing is that book. The Bible is the is the best seller. The best selling book all over. Every year it ranks number one. From the day the Bible was made until today. Not he doesn't have this. You know, you know how somebody, you know, in the school, there was one time, I can't remember where they said the guy that came first in the school had about 90, 90 something percent mark. He said the second is from 60 percent. So there is no 90-something. There is no 80-80-something. 
There is no 70, 70 something. There is no 60, 60 something. It's from 60 downwards. That's how the Bible is. The best selling book. There is no second, no third, no fourth, no any. There are no other, no comparison. Every year he sells more than any book ever written, put together. That's why some of you don't even have it. Most don't have it. You don't have a Bible. And you say you are a Christian. You say you are a believer. Believer in who? things you must know. If you are going to walk walk of the spirit. Paul said, quit you like men, men. If you are going to quit like men, men. If you are going to stop living like men, men. Living by your calculations and all of that. See, another thing I want to tell you, please. I just, it just dropped in my spirit. This thing is not something that you, it's not an overnight stop. It's not a 100 meter dash. You start it today, tomorrow you get there. No. It's precept upon precept. Line upon line. Just keep at it. Men who through faith and patience, marry patience. Pray God, grant me the grace of patience in my life so I can wait. God, the Bible says he's slow to anger. To anger. In other his patience, his long suffering. He waits, he can wait. The same way, when you are, the problem is just for make sure that you are doing the right thing. Make sure you are doing what you are ought to do and you're on the right track. Just keep doing it. Don't bother whether you are seeing the result today. Don't be like Esau that wanted it today, today. We spend all our time and all of that investing in today, we don't invest in our future. God loves you. So when they say God loves you, you can understand. Whenever someone says or you hear the message or somebody or the pastor or someone you hear God loves you, you know where your mind will go to? You go to Romans chapter 5, verse 6, 7 and 8. That's where your mind and then you go to John chapter 15, verse 13. No greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life. You go to Romans chapter 8, verse 32. If God did not spare his only son, Jesus, but gave him up, there is nothing else that he cannot give freely give. You go to a Genesis 17, where he's got, God said to Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. I am your gift. When, God, when you hear God loves you, this is where your mind he said, in this God commended his love. This is the description of love. That is what it means. In this, this is how God would define love. That he laid down his life for you. And there is no other thing that anybody can give you more than his life. He can give you his life. Even the money he will not give you. You will have money, you are afraid. You know those who are afraid. You know some of those things you do. Your friend will come and say, uh, uh, David, Dave, now. I need 2K. You will have 20,000. You won't give him even 500. You tell him that there is no... As a matter of fact, you are even taking a way to come to him. Amen. When we go to this communion table, that's what I pray to God help me. Open my eyes to this eternal. Go back. I think they normally post these messages on the platform and all of that. Copy them now, listen to them. This thing that when you see uh, this guy, next time I catch you, I will not catch you. Next time I see you, I will not tell you when I will do it. I will come and remove that thing that that earpiece you put in here. I want to hear the kind of music you are listening to. That's why when they are listening to me, sad your whatever. And we all care. But they are spirit, they are ingesting it. Listen to the word of God. Get these things. Put it in your ears. Listen to them over and over. It will change your life. It will transform you. As we come to the communion table now, Father, we thank
thank you. It's an awesome privilege and honor. We cannot express our love, the privilege that we have in Jesus Christ. You brought us thus far, Lord. We thank you. We come to this communion table. We remember this is the very body of Jesus Christ and the very blood that you shed. On that very day, you remember, Lord, you said in your word, we know. Took the bread and you bless it and say, break, break it and say, take it. This is my body. And then you gave them the, the wine and say, this is the blood of the New Testament. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show your death until you come. Remember also that you said in your word that if we eat the body and drink your blood, we have life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we come to the communion table in obedience to your word, everything that you have accomplished through the death and the resurrection, may it be unleashed on the life of everyone that comes to this Lord. Where there is need for physical, the physical needs, the material needs, spiritual needs, divine interventions, opening our eyes, taking us into the deeper waters. Whatever it is, Lord, grant every one of us according to the expectations of your heart.